Chelsea Clinton has been hustling since way back, going from presidential first daughter to mother, wife, and philanthropist. No matter what path she chose, she would have been famous. But she's also established a successful career for herself, amassing a heavy fortune. Here's how much she really makes. While her famous last name no doubt opened doors for her, Clinton hasn't relied on her parents to carry her through life. The former first daughter began studying ballet at the age of four, learned how to invest in the stock market when she was 11, and even skipped the third grade. Her stellar high school record gained her admission to the elite Stanford University, where she initially planned to become a doctor. We were really proud of her, really excited for her, but you know, we were gonna miss her. She was all the way across the country, and we were heading back to the White House alone. She eventually changed her major from pre-med to history, earning her master's degree in international relations from Oxford University. After a few years in the workforce, Clinton went back to school to get yet another Oxford degree. And in 2014, she graduated with a PhD in international relations at the age of 34. Famous parents aside, such an impressive resume under her belt makes Clinton legitimately qualified for any number of high-paying jobs. Were you asked to fix Middle East peace at any point? No, that, that never came up. Rumors persist that Clinton's parents are responsible for her fortune, including one alleging that after graduating, she was hired by her parents, who then paid her a cushy salary of $900,000 a year. So how much truth was there to the allegation? According to Snopes, absolutely none. While it's true that Clinton was making a pretty big chunk of change at the time that the rumor was going around, her real salary was nowhere near the almost million-dollar salary that the gossip claimed. Her money also didn't come from her parents. She earned that from other sources. Clinton entered the workforce straight out of grad school, landing a gig with consulting firm McKinsey after completing her master's at Oxford, according to The Telegraph. Clinton's starting salary for the job should have been roughly just over $50,000, but The Observer claimed that Clinton was actually raking in a solid $120,000 in her first year with the company. Clinton reportedly stayed at McKinsey for three years, but the job took its toll and she eventually parted ways with the firm, telling The Telegraph, "...was I going to continue to work 100 hours a week and invest time there and energy, or was I going to do something else?" Clinton went on to enter the hedge fund world, joining Avenue Capital Group in 2006. Founders Mark Lasry and Sonia Gardner were major contributors to Hillary's Senate re-election campaign. While Clinton's exact salary at Avenue Capital isn't publicly known, the Intelligencer estimated that as a newcomer with limited experience, Clinton would have been expected to make a starting annual salary of $100,000. Hedge funds are also known for paying out substantial bonuses. Chelsea's first-year bonus could have been as much as $150,000, more than doubling her salary. In 2011, Clinton joined NBC News and was paid quite handsomely for her contributions. We're so glad to have you! We're so glad to be here! As a special correspondent, she was reported to be making a jaw-dropping $600,000 per year, more than many full-time correspondents were earning at the time, according to Vanity Fair. Official sources were reluctant to comment on the details of Clinton's employment, with a network spokesperson telling Politico at the time, "...we don't comment on details of existing contracts. NBC News continues to enjoy a wonderful working relationship with Chelsea, and we are proud of her work." The job, along with the hefty salary, was criticized by many who thought that Clinton didn't have the journalistic skills to justify her position. The Los Angeles Times speculated that NBC was trying to, quote, curry favor with the Clintons, while the Intelligencer criticized NBC for paying Clinton more than half a million per year to, quote, do nothing, basically. While working for NBC wasn't a full-time gig, Clinton did work on assignments for Rock Center with Brian Williams and also contributed to NBC's nightly news. She left the position in 2014. Since 2011, Clinton has also served as the vice chair of her family's organization, the Clinton Foundation. While she presumably doesn't draw a salary for her work with the philanthropic organization, its mission is very important to her. Clinton told The Telegraph that she wants to focus on issues that have existed too long in the shadows that historically have made people uncomfortable. The foundation works globally, focusing on initiatives that address global warming, providing food and health care for people living in poverty, and children's health. So 87% of our funds go directly to support our work, whether that's our schoolwork here in the United States or our work on HIV AIDS around the world. Plenty of people claim she's profiting off her parents' success, and it's a reputation that she wants to prove wrong. She said in an interview with The Telegraph, 
I will just always work harder than anybody else and hopefully perform better. And hopefully, over time, I preempt and erase whatever expectations people have of me not having a good work ethic or not being smart or not being motivated. In 2019, Clinton announced that she and her father plan to launch a podcast in connection with the organization called Why Am I Telling You This? But while it's dear to her heart, the Family Foundation is also a source of internal conflict. She told The Telegraph, It is frustrating, because who wants to grow up and follow their parents? I've tried really hard to care about things that were very different from my parents, but I feel called to this work both as a daughter and also as someone who believes I have contributions to make. One of Clinton's most lucrative positions to date pays her hundreds of thousands of dollars for attending just a handful of meetings. She sits on the boards of two companies, IAC and Expedia, both of which are run by family friend Barry Diller, a billionaire who donated over $400,000 to Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign, according to the Daily Mail. Chelsea has reportedly been on the board of IAC since 2011 and, in 2018, made nearly $300,000 in combined stock and cash for attending just six meetings. According to SEC filings, Clinton owns more than $6 million in stock in the company. Clinton also made over $300,000 for attending a couple of Expedia board meetings. While she owns less stock in that company, her total Expedia stocks are worth over $400,000, considerably bolstering her net worth. Like both her parents, Clinton has also published several books, including children's books, and she's also co-authored a book on global health. So I'm so excited to share with you my next picture book, and outside of my children, you're the first people to hear this book. Her She Persisted series features a strong feminist message and is centered on the lives of famous women. She explained to The Guardian that she wants to highlight the achievements of women, especially as most popular children's books feature boys, explaining, It's so often the case that our stories are centered around men, told by men, the heroes are men, and so I think it's hugely important that we make women more visible and also to imagine and create more female-centered stories moving forward. With an estimated net worth of $15 million, Clinton is rich in her own right, but she also married someone with a fortune of his own. Her husband, Mark Mazvinsky, grew up in a well-to-do family and, like his wife, also attended Stanford. The Mazvinsky and Clinton families have been friends since the 90s, which is how the two originally met. Mazvinsky is an investment banker who has worked for Goldman Sachs as well as hedge fund 3G Capital, reportedly earning an estimated $2 million a year. The couple also has some substantial assets, including a $10.5 million apartment in New York City, according to Vanity Fair. Their home boasts 5,000 square feet and is an upgrade from their previous place, which they bought for the comparatively cheap sum of $4 million. What do you give the person who has everything? How about a really, really expensive wedding? The lavish affair, which took place in 2010, caused a media frenzy. Clinton's custom-made Vera Wang gown alone cost more than many normal weddings in their entirety at an estimated cost of $25,000, according to The Knot. Throw in a 500-pound wedding cake with nine tiers standing at a total of four feet, estimated to cost a minimum of $10,000, as well as an 18-piece big band orchestra, and you're looking at quite a hefty overall price tag. The wedding took place at Astor Court's estate in Rhinebeck, New York, where receptions can cost up to $200,000, according to ABC News. The total cost of the event was estimated to clock in at a whopping $2 million. For Hillary and me, it was a very special day, and one I suppose I'll remember till the day I die. That's a lot of money, even for those as wealthy as the Clintons, but the family reportedly didn't exactly foot the entire bill themselves. In 2016, emails released by WikiLeaks indicated that the Clinton Foundation paid for at least part of the lavish wedding, according to The Independent, but that claim has yet to be confirmed. As the only child of Bill and Hillary Clinton, Chelsea stands to add to her already massive personal net worth when she one day inherits her parents' wealth. The Clintons famously claim to have left the White House with hardly any money, and Hillary has also claimed that they didn't go in with much either. She told ABC, we had no money when we got there, and we struggled to piece together the resources for mortgages for houses, for Chelsea's education. It was not easy. In the years that followed, though, the Clintons managed to amass a large personal fortune through speaking events and book sales. According to a 2016 Forbes analysis of their tax returns, the Clintons had raked in over $240 million since leaving the White House. 
While most of the money was made by the former president through book sales, they no doubt added to their sizable nest egg the following year when Hillary's post-election loss book, What Happened, broke sales records. While she may be busy with her career, Clinton's most important job is being a mother. Uh, my most important identity now, though, is as a mother to my two children. The former first daughter has her hands full with her growing family. After the birth of her first child, she told Elle, Mark and I are like, what did we do before we were parents? My whole life is reoriented around my daughter in the most blessed sense. I now understand all of the enthusiastic, bombastically spectacular, wonderful things people say about their children. Being a mother might keep her busy, but it has also reinforced Clinton's commitment toward gender equality. She told Sky News, I didn't know that I could care any more about gender equality until I became a mom and until I became the mother of a daughter. What had been such an imperative to me became all that more visceral because now it's not just all girls that I'm fighting for, it's also my daughter Charlotte. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.